Ireland is Brendan McNeil. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, top look. In the last few years, uh, Iceland and Ireland have leapfrogged the UK in terms of growth and indeed deficit reduction, and have always had a higher GDP in the last 10 years. Norway's oil fund is now 920 billion, having grown by, from 815 billion, a growth of 105 billion. The equivalent figures for the UK are zero, zero, and zero. Does the Secretary of State not agree that Scotland could be as good as tiny Iceland? as good as Ireland and even Norway with their independence. What is he scared of for Scotland? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps uh, at least all of us on this side of the House can agree that the greatest contribution from Scotland is to show that there is actually an alternative yes, to the right. destructive yeah. policies yeah. of this UK yeah. Tory yeah. government. It's, it's worth remembering that in Scotland we have free prescriptions, free eye tests, free childcare, free university tuition, we've scrapped bridge tolls, we've reopened railways, we've invested in infrastructure, we're building more council houses than any UK nation. That is what the SNP has delivered in government in Scotland. Does he not agree that this stands in marked contrast to the Tories' mismanagement and destruction of public services south of the border? Yeah, quote, quotes about doing the day job when you're calling an early general election is really a bit. Uh, let, let, let's, re let's rest on a neutral observer, not the, the Tory party research officer. What about the director of the Institute of Health and Society? And he said, and I'm quoting his words here, Scotland is in a much stronger position than England with respect to both health and social care. He went on to say the problem at the moment is that the English government is not committed to a national health service. Isn't this just another example that the real alternative to the Tory UK government is the progressive policies of the SNP? Now is not the time, is what the Prime Minister says to the Scottish Parliament as it wants to let Scotland decide its own future and its own relationship with Europe. But now is the time for the screeching U-turn in this opportunistic general election. Does he also believe it's therefore also the time for the Scottish people to once again reject this government's austerity obsession, its assault on the poor, the obnoxious raid clause and its desire to drive Scotland over the cliff edge of its hard Brexit? Scotland voted to remain in the EU and the single market, but the Scottish Government's paper that would have kept Scotland in the single market and the UK was roundly ignored by the Tory UK Government intent on pursuing a reckless hard Brexit. Can the Secretary of State for Scotland tell us what personal action he took to convince the Prime Minister to take account of the views of the people of Scotland and can he provide an explanation for why he failed? EMC yeah. is supposed to be the platform where the devolved administrations have their hoist voice is not just heard, but responded to. The Secretary of State paints a rosy picture, but he's not listening to voices. The Northern Ireland voice isn't heard at the moment because they're not allowed to attend. The Scottish voice you've already heard this morning said very, very clearly they're being ignored, and the Welsh fail at best less than impressed by this. When will his government give this body the teeth it needs, put a statutory footing and let it do its job properly? As a last act of kindness, and while he still has his seat and his position, will he address the issue of the closure of the HMRC office in my Livingston constituency threatening a thousand jobs with a move to Edinburgh? Cross-party group of politicians have written to him, including his own party. He has ignored this. His last swan song, will he come to Livingston and save those jobs? Can the Minister tell us what assessment he has made of the contribution of Scotland to the EU single market? Here, here. Well, Mr Speaker, I think, uh, I think the Honourable Gentleman is missing the point. The Secretary of State has previously said that he supports the European single market, that being part of the single market was clearly the best possible deal for Scotland. I wonder if the Secretary of State could tell his constituents, will he now stand in a manifesto to take Scotland out of that single market? What assessment has my Honourable Fed made of the opportunities for increasing the exports of whisky across the world as part of a free trade agreement once we leave the European Union? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the Honourable Gentleman was asking about whisky exports. Let's hear the Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, my Honourable Friend uh, raises a very important point. Uh, whisky is a vital part of our export mix. Uh, exports of whisky reached 3.999 billion 
uh, in 2016, a big increase. And actually, Mr. Speaker, whisky has actually been at the part of quite a few of our trade missions, notably uh, the Secretary of International Trade, myself and the Prime Minister, when we were in India in November, took with us the Scotch Whisky Association. And we've seen big increases in exports to India. The Speaker, the former Prime Minister David Cameron promised he would not resign if he lost the EU referendum. He reneged on that promise within hours. The current Prime Minister said on seven occasions she would not call an early election. She reneged on that promise yesterday. Will the Minister, on behalf of the Secretary of State, give him the chance to break the mould and renew the commitment given to this House on at least three occasions that whatever support is put in place for business in the North East, like Nissan, will be put in place for Scotland? The question was whether you would renew the promise given to Scotland would have the same deal. And if you will, will you tell the people in the oil and gas supply chain that the report from the Robert Gordon University last week that said that Brexit would cost them £200 million, pounds, that that money will be sorted, they'll be looked after in the same way this is prepared to be, or will you ignore and break another promise? 75% of Canada's exports go to the US, whereas only 63% of Scotland's exports go to the rest of the UK. Canada is a successful independent country. Does the Secretary of State agree with me that neighbouring countries can have close trading relations while still maintaining their sovereignty? Of, of course uh, countries can have a uh, close a uh, close uh, trading uh, relationship. The value of Scottish exports of food and drink have doubled in the past 10 years, 5.5 billion in 2016. However, this week Jim, James Withers, the ex chief executive of Scotland Food and Drink, said that he was afraid of the consequences of leaving the European Union not having a trade deal and tariffs. Well, the Secretary of State guaranteed that the Scottish food and drink sector will not have to deal with that situation with tariffs. Stand by his comments last year when he said, My role is to ensure Scotland gets the best possible deal involving clearly being part of the single market. Yeah, Will he be honest with his constituents in a few weeks' time? Are they voting for an MP who supports staying in the single market? Or are they voting for an MP who wants to go along with a damaging, hard Brexit, yeah, whatever it's yeah, called, yeah, yeah. families and businesses and his constituency? Yeah. The Tory strategy worked a treat for the, against the Liberal Democrats in the south west of England at the last election. Is it a strategy that the Secretary of State will be urging his colleagues to export in the coming election to Scotland? 